So Nintendo announces Labo, and it's easily their most unique creation to date. When they said they were announcing new ways to play with the Switch, they really meant it. With the success of the Nintendo Switch and the announcement of Labo, as a huge Nintendo fan, I feel there's a lot to talk about, so let's start talking. Nintendo Labo was announced January 17th, and it's set to release in the US and Japan April 20th. It will release in Europe and the UK a week later, April 27th. There's going to be two kits, one's being called a variety kit and it's priced at $69.99 Nintendo's calling their other one the robot kit and it'll be priced at $79 US. Each kit will include a Switch game cartilage that will allow the user to properly interact with their toy cons as they're being called by Nintendo. It's quite obvious that this isn't designed for the core gamer but it's more targeted at the children and maybe families and some collectors that will buy into it. This might seem like Nintendo's using these cardboard cutouts as a way of virtual reality, but it has been confirmed otherwise by Reggie from Nintendo of America, where he quoted the Toronto Sun saying, It's not meant to be some sort of competitive answer to virtual reality, it's meant to be something totally unique and unexpected. Okay, so let's break down what we know. In the first kit, called the Variety Kit, Nintendo's including one motorcycle cardboard cutout, one house, a fishing rod, two RC cars, and a piano. The robot kit, on the other hand, includes just one toy con, and it's designed to be worn by the user as a controller, virtually moving the in-game robot with just your body. Not much else has been revealed as of yet. Most likely, both these kits will be used in a bunch of mini-games that are included in the game cartilage. Nintendo has also stated that they will be releasing customization kits that will consist of stickers, stencils, letters, even two rolls of Nintendo-themed tape for you to decorate your Labo Toy-Cons. These decorations will undoubtedly create a sense of uniqueness for the Toy-Con owners and also adds to the fun of building them, but the customization kit will set you back an additional $10. Still, one big unanswered question is the longevity of the Toy-Cons. With the entire kit being made up of cardboard and your Nintendo Switch, it's very likely they will break, rip, or simply fall apart, leaving parents in a position of replacing them again and again, or just being a one-time use toy. For collectors and more mature fans that plan on buying them, the preservation may be a little bit easier. But for now, we'll have to wait and see when the Toy-Cons are released, again on April 20th. I personally find it funny that Microsoft and Sony are working with raw power, trying to appeal to consumers with very polished graphics, high power consoles, and innovations such as Sony's VR and Microsoft offering full K resolution. Meanwhile, Nintendo gives us cardboard toys. Now as bad as that may sound, to some, there may be a market for it. Lab was unintended to undermine what Nintendo has done up until this point with the Switch which has been a complete success with its good hardware and its hybrid nature and lots of AAA titles this far. But that's a topic for a different time. Be sure to let us know if you are planning on buying Nintendo Labo for yourself or someone you know in the comment section below. That's it, hope you enjoyed the video. Also consider subscribing for more content just like this. Have a good day.